Okay, computer kids, you're going to want to skip the first, like, 10 minutes of this because it's going to be identical to what we did in second period. No. Okay, I'm going to go for, uh, full screen eventually, but first of all, because I have to jump to another PowerPoint, you didn't get your quiz back. It's weird. I think I've entered yours. You got 15 out of 15? I don't, I, that's weird. Um, uh, I don't know where. I have Jackson's and Kai's. I don't know, Sarah, but I think it's on Power School. Who knows? All right, but anyway, guys, uh, we're going to talk about prepositions real quick. And then Jason the Argonauts. They, Jason the Argonauts is uh, kind of relevant mm -hmm. more to my Latin one people. But y'all should have not hear about these people just because, like, I don't know. I don't think we've talked about Jason the Argonauts much, so we're going to talk about him really quickly <laughs> by highlighting the really weirdly violent parts of his story. Uh, next year when I make y'all take the National Latin exam, uh, there's actually, like, a quarter of this 40-point, 40 40-question 40 standardized test that just asks, like, basic, like, almost, like, trivia-style questions about the basics of Greek mythology. So talk about somebody like Jason the Argonauts. It almost might feel like it's not the curriculum, but it actually is. But anyway, we're gonna most we're just gonna finish chapter twenty three this week. So we'll have a Catalan story that'll probably start in the class, but it'll definitely be the thing to do tomorrow. This thing I passed out. We'll get to it. We'll get to it today, uh, whether you like it or not. Especially if y'all don't ask me questions about Jason and his crazy girlfriend Sophia. I will bring you guys the lectiones today in SA, and you'll do six of those for one semester. Okay, you know the pro. Jeopardy was great last week, we'll do another Jeopardy review. And then Friday will be a translation quiz. Uh, so it'll be translating participles, which is kind of tricky. Uh, so we're just going to spend the rest of the week practicing said participles. Because, um, I mean, those participles, they got a lot going on. You got to really understand what's going on with those participles to do well in this class. First of all, First, guys, let's take some notes, and I mean actual useful notes, not just like notes you do just because you're like, let's do notes just to do notes. So I have a part of your notebook, and, it, and just like label it like prepositions and underline it, because guys, at this point, we have over 15 prepositions, and it's just a lot to keep track of. So I think your translations will go a little quicker, and they'll be more confident about them. If you just have all the prepositions right there in front of you, and they're organized by the ones that say ablative versus accusative. Because pretty much like what, like every two sentences, we have at least one prepositional phrase showing up. As in, we can't really go more than two or three translations without dealing with these guys. And it's it's just like, it's good to be able to like blast through a prepositional phrase really rapidly and not be like, oh, what is per again? Um, 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 look it up. Uh, what's that? Yeah. Um, so I have the two columns separate for a reason. Uh, it'll be labeled in just a second. But it has to do with the case of the object these prepositions take. So, Avery, what does in in Latin mean? Yeah, it means in. Uh, it can also sometimes mean what else? Anyone? Into. Into if it's accusative. So that's, again, what the two columns are. So label them this way. I have the ablative ones on the left, the accusative ones on the right. What do I mean by that? Just to refresh us. We don't talk about, no, we do talk about ablative a lot. I was ignoring Alos with my 1.5 kids, but we talk about Alos. Um, but yeah, remember like these prepositional phrases, uh, they contain a preposition, which is a, a word. It sounds really jargony, and it's like something easy to forget. But it's a word that expresses a relation between a noun and something else. It's often a spatial relation, like I'm next to the desk, I'm on the desk, I'm inside of the desk, I'm under the desk. It's all like spatial things happening, right? But sometimes it's like temporal as in having to do with time before or after. But that's, that's basically what a preposition is. And then in Latin, they always take an object or an English, but any language, that's the whole point. They're taking an object. And in Latin, half the time their object is an ablative, which is really like they need a long vowel. But the other half of the time they are taking accusative objects. Um, and this is worth noting so that if you do see accusatives, you know that it doesn't necessarily mean it's a direct object. If it's next to or nearby one of these prepositions, then it'll probably just be the object of said preposition. Now, that's a little deeper than you actually need to go with it, right? Like, y'all don't probably need to walk around being like, 
I know that X day in app take ablatives and post takes and accuse that if I'm a robot. Like that'd be good, I guess. But usually like we we're not writing in Latin ourselves. If we wrote in Latin all the time, it would be good to understand what case um, each of these propositions takes as an object. But we're not doing that. Usually the, the fact of the matter is these propositions are right next to their object and you just kind of translate them without overthinking it too much. Um, but it's, it's, I don't know, it's, it's a good detail to, to at least have the opportunity to know that they take ablative or accusative cases. Per, what does per mean anyone? Per like doesn't show up much. Yeah. Good, so it usually means through taking an accusative. Usually. It can technically like in, um, take an ablative and it would actually be by if it takes an ablative. I don't know if you've ever seen that though. Maybe if it was a pronoun, like somebody does something by themselves, but it's usually going to be through. And I, I think I forgot to mention it. So like in, per can take either ablative or accusative, which is not usually the case. When in takes an accusative, it's not in or on, it's in to. Okay. And it's like, that's important because in is actually very different than into. And you usually hear it when you like try to say in, but the object is accusative, it probably sounds awkward, and it's because you need to make it in too. There was also one time that in was at, because its case was, or its object was culpa, and it was like at fault, not in or on. But it's usually in. Uh, the next couple are pairings, they actually go together. Also, percent by 100. This Kimson was like 100. Uh, what is cine, Allie? <laughs> It's the first proposition we got, but I'd say it is probably easy to forget, Chloe. Without, Carly, do you remember post? Good, after, very good. And so the, the ones that come after both of these, they come after them for a reason, because we kind of have some pairing here. But Cine was the first one we got, and it's without. In French, we have sans, S-A-N-S. -S. Like if you're doing something sans something, that means without something. Uh, it's a great example. Uh, but yeah, it's just the French version of C name. And then post is after. Oh, we use it in English all the time. Post war means anything after World War II. Post after. <coughs> yeah. No, right. Uh, yeah. And then, and then the next two, like I said, you, they're like pairings, kind of that go with the ones that precede them. Cum is with. So cum and C name are kind of opposites. I was thinking, I was like, you know, the word antonym. That's usually for like opposite. Things like dark versus light. I don't think these actually count as antonyms, but they, they kind of feel like that insofar as proposition is going to have an antonym. And then anti is the opposite of post. Not anti like A N T I, that means like opposed. That's like a Greek anti. This is anti like antebellum. In the South, antebellum architecture is houses made before the Civil War. So circle coom with sine and then circle post and anti. So you know they go together. The next ones don't really have a body pro anyone. What's pro? Cammy? It can be for, on behalf of, or even before. So you might want to write before, but know that it's a different before than anti's before. I know that sounds weird, but anti's before is like always about time. Like something's happened before something else happens. But this before would be like I'm standing before someone. But usually pro seems to be more like for or on behalf of. Um, like pro patria, you're doing something for the country. Sub, what is sub prudence or Cali? A submarine is something under, I mean, it's under, under yes, thank you. Uh, I don't know where I was going with that. It's not above mare, it's under mare. So sub is under, uh, and then a, I don't write a put, don't, don't actually write it. I think we know it anyway because I say a put notes. But uh, it is similar to enter, which you should write enter. Enter often means between, but everyone's talking about between's awkward, so among's good. And what are some words we get from enter anyway? If, if you're saying between countries, what is that? Like a sports competition that happens between countries, Cam, at least? International, Cami? Enter what? Yeah, interstate. What, yeah, 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 that's true. Like uh, giant roads that run between states. Um, intranet or like networks that are between things, you know. Uh, intramural, mural comes from a Latin word for wall, so that's like between the same walls of a, of a school. It's kind of an abstract way to think about it, but um, intra, intra is like beyond, that's what it's I N T R A. I don't know if you guys will ever get intra. Uh, okay, the next three on the ablative side 
And they're all from. So we have these three awful from's. But they do all have their kind of own nuance. So X is sometimes from or from out of. But it can also be what? Anyone? It can just be simply if it's with a number. It can just be of, actually. So yeah, it's often from or out from, from out of. But if it's between a number to its left and an abo to its right, it'll just be of, as in Kentum X discipulis, 100 of the students. Because uh, you could say like 100 from out of the students, but that sounds needlessly awkward. So just of is better for, for X in that context. Now, day is from, or it's like a totally different word. Anyone? About. About. Good. Yeah, yeah. And so this is a, this word also shows up in French and Spanish. It's usually more like of. Uh, and it's kind of of in Latin, but not quite, not technically. It could be more like concerning or like regarding. But we usually translate as from or about, which about is like a totally different thing. And then ab is from or away from, or for you guys and not my 1.5 kids yet, because I haven't gotten to chapter 18, thank God. Ab is actually anyone? Bye, good. So I need to, I'll write that just for y'all. Computer kids, I'm writing bye for ab on the board. Because I, I admit, I technically made this for my 1.5 kids in mind. But, I mean, literally everybody should look at this. It's by when it's with a passive verb. So computer kids are writing by for ab plus a passive verb. And ah can be shortened to just the long a. Also, f can be shortened to just the long e. So we might note that. But yeah, ab can still be from or away from. But when the verb is passive, it'll be like the subject is passively verbed by, and then it's like an ablative. Uh, of agent, probably. Or of means. And then add. Add is y'all's last one. There's probably, I think there's like two more missing. But what is add, anyone? Two, yeah. So how do you remember? Because that's like, that's pretty tricky, right? Ab is from, add is to. How do you split that up? I don't have a thing for ab yet, other than that is the ab that shows up in the word ablative, which doesn't really help actually. But add, if you like add something, you're adding to something. Maybe that kind of makes sense. It can also be toward. It's kind of like the, well, no. But we have two prepositions in that takes you and add that they kind of mean like you're, you're, it's like they imply motion towards something. Go ahead and add prop there. That's like the first one we get that takes an accusative. And then there's probably, I should flip through, but what's the one y'all recently got? Anyone? It sounds really cool. In Japan, there's like a series, there's like a Power Rangers esque show about Ultraman. So do ultra that's beyond. Computer kids write ultra in the the accusative column. And then now I just want to get to the bottom. I'm just going to flip through real quick. And we'll move on. Y'all are in 23. So I think y'all got ultra in 23. But what else have y'all gotten since then that the 1.5 kids have not gotten? That's what I want to know right now. Anybody do anything cool this weekend to celebrate the beautiful weather? Nice. Yeah, yesterday I felt like the first day you could put on sunscreen. Though there was really good cloud cover. It's like the cloud cover was perfect to where you wouldn't necessarily get really sweaty going out. But it was like... Oh, really? Is that a thing? Oh, uh, weird. But it, it like almost all summer yesterday, but not in a harsh way, which is part because it's spring. That's what it's supposed to be. Cammy, you turn on your what? Fountain, nice. It's about that time. You know, a lot of naysayers are like, "Oh, there's still gonna be snow," but it's like, okay, we'll see. <laughs> right now is nice. Uh, Sadie. Nice. That's just a classic time, you know. Can't go wrong with that. All right, I'm not seeing... Oh, Contra. Contra never shows up. It never shows up. But Contra takes an accusative. Do anybody know what Contra means? Yeah. So that's all of them as far as I can see. For a whopping, like if I don't count the ones that can technically take accusative or ablative, it's a whopping... Let me actually just count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16, and I'm not counting a put because I don't technically have that. Cami? Yes. And it's like, what, roughly eight on each side? Yeah. Okay. So we got we got an even amount. All right. Um, 
What am I doing? Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go through this a little faster because y'all are two point five kids, y'all are one point five kids. But like I said, it's like I don't know, like why why did they get to talk about mythology? And for you guys, I'm like, oh, they don't need to talk about this. They've already had me before, so we don't need to talk about this. I don't know if we ever, if, if I've ever talked with, about Jason and the Argonauts too much with you guys. I'm trying to cover all the basic, like really obvious Greek heroes. Uh, so like I said, I'll try to uh, focus on the weirdly violent parts of this myth. But Jason is, for one thing, what's weird about his name compared to other heroes, anyone? Yeah, it's just like a normal name. Alyssa? Oh, you, like there's all these cool names like Hercules, yeah. Perseus, and then there's just Jason. Right, like Perseus, Perseus, his friend Jason. Theseus and Perseus have those classic U.S. endings that like a lot of Greek dude names have um, that translate to the second declension in Latin. Hercules is a well-known name, maybe partly because of the Disney movie. But then Jason, it's almost like I don't think he's super well-known, and it's not his fault because if you just said Jason and like without context, people wouldn't know that you're talking about a specific Greek myth. Because people still totally like name their kids Jason, so it's a pretty common, normal name. It doesn't sound ancient, but it's technically three thousand years old. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, I don't know. To me, I associated. I think the very first American Power Rangers in the early '90s, the Red Ranger was named Jason. So that's my first association with Jason. I was like, that's a main character. Like that's like a, it's like a dude who plays basketball well, and he's like he's a leader of the Power Rangers. Uh, but Jason is this guy, he's born in a town uh, in Thessaly, which is near Macedonia, of uh, this northeastern part of Greece, and around the area where Achilles will be born uh, soon after Jason. And uh, he has an evil uncle, everybody in Greek mythology has an evil uncle, Peleus is killing everyone on Jason's side of the family. Um, Jason's dad is named Aeson, go figure, so it's Jason without a J. Uh, but they're going around, Peleus' men, killing people. And so Aeson's wife hides Jason's birth by getting her handmaidens to like hold around the baby, uh, crying. They're all crying. So that when I guess this person is like going house to house, walks in, he's like, oh, that baby's already dead. I don't need to kill it. Like y'all must be mourning this baby not surviving birth. Uh, but in fact, he did. So this reminds me a little bit of Zeus getting hidden away by his mother so that he couldn't get swallowed up by uh, Cronus. Uh, so he could grow up in that cave. And the mom sends him to go get trained by Chiron, who we've talked about before because he's a goofily enough a character in Percy Jackson. But he's like a centaur. Okay, people have fought with centaurs before at earlier points of Greek mythology. They're usually like barbaric, a barbaric tribe of like, you know, half men, half horses. But Chiron's cool. His parents actually aren't centaurs. He's very mild mannered. And he will not only raise Jason, but he'll also go on to train Achilles. Um, Wait, if, he's, if his parents aren't centaurs, how did he get Really, all the weird, like, mythological creatures initially spring forth from just, like, the Titan generation. And it's just, like, it does, none of it ever makes sense. It's, like, this wind god gave birth to a snake lady. Like, it doesn't, it's just kind of, like, random. Um, but, yeah, the Titans are good at that. Just, like, uh, giving rise to, like, these weird half-creature animal things. Uh, the evil uncle goes to consult an oracle at Delphi, which was a real thing. These women who would potentially be inhaling weird, like, toxic, theologic, like, gases or fumes that would make them hallucinate and go into a trance state. But an oracle tells, uh, Peleus, the evil uncle, a dude with one sandal is gonna overcome you. Uh, but anyway, Jason grows up with Chiron. He eventually goes back to this town. On the way there, he helps an old woman who's drowning in a river. And while he's doing that, it turns out the old woman is actually Hera in disguise, of course. But while he's doing that, he loses a sandal. And so he walks into town, and everyone apparently knows about this prophecy. And they're like, oh, that's the dude who's going to overcome Peleus. And so they tell him, and then the dude goes to Peleus, who is different than Achilles' dad, Peleus. We talked about recently. This is how you should spell it. I think I spelled it with a Q at the beginning. That's, that's Achilles' dad. Anyway, so Jason goes to Peleus, and he's like, hey, dude, what's up? I heard about the prophecy. I'm here to let you know that I'm going to be the one to overcome you. Just wanted you to know. And Peleus is like, okay, that's kind of crazy, but you do have one sandal, so I guess I can't deny you. Uh, but I'm not going to go quietly. Uh, you have to give me the Golden Fleece if you want to actually be the king of Eoculus. Uh The Golden Fleece, we don't know that much about it. It's a magical item that is all the way... In, uh, what's, what's it in Percy Jackson? What are they? Is it in the first one? I don't actually know. <laughs> nice. We both don't. 
Say he says this in the second one. Is it important? Like, what is it? It's very important. Does it have a power? There's a main character in the movie, Alan, and she's like, basically, and she dies, and then she dies, and then she dies, she turned into a tree, and then, like, the tree was, like, the very, so, like, and she died, and then, so, like, and so they, like, took it down to the tree, so, like, they could take it from the library, but then this game came, and then, like, I think he came, he brought back the devil. Is it Hermes? Yeah, like, the Interesting. Okay. And then didn't um like Titan catch his name and love that name. Who's his sister? Um, I don't know. It's like uh, Cronus. Yeah, yeah, Cronus like comes back from the dead and he's stored away and beats him into like a chest or something. Like, 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 part of like the whole series, like you know how like series have like the same thing, and then one of them like catches like like it's like his friend that and like the second book and then the rest of them. Interesting. Percy Jackson's kind of crazy. I, I'm going to watch the D-plus show in it. Forthcoming in 2022. Yeah, it's, the second movie didn't even follow the book at all. Oh, really? Oh, weird. Okay. Uh, I bet those are the kind of books I could, like, sit down and read them in, like, a simple sitting. Not not anything against the books. I'm just saying, like, or I could, like, purposely skim it a little bit. Get it from the library so I don't spend money on it. But, uh, interesting, very interesting. In Harry Potter, it's like you find out about the Horcruxes, but you don't find out about them until, like, the fifth or sixth book. Those like, are so confusing. It took me watching them 12 times to finally understand. I couldn't get that. I was trying to circle one thing. Like, 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 and then, like, a little you got to think sometimes these stories would maybe benefit from, like, say, J.K. Rowling. Like, I think she definitely had a plan for all seven books. But maybe it wasn't completely fleshed out. Oh, like, okay. she it, like, what? She wrote like, the last chapter of the seventh book before she finished reading it. Okay, that's actually sweet. So, yeah, so she really was working towards a point. Okay. <laughs> to me, I feel like Horcruxes and the, the Trinity of the Weird Magic items would have shown up earlier if she had fully. But maybe she did know about it if she was like taking her time. I just needed more explanation. Like, why did they have to dress up as those people? I was so. I couldn't finish the second book because of how confusing it was to me. Like, the language was so hard to comprehend. And, like, I can't focus on things that well. So, if I'm not interested in it, I would just, like, sit there and I was like, I really want to read this, but if it's this hard, I'm not going to. She uses some weird British y sounding words, but the language in Harry Potter is very simple. I mean, it really is good for like third, fourth grade. But I guess by the end, it's so dark, it's like you should probably be in middle school. Or else you might get nightmares. But anyway, back to this real quickly. So they have to go to this place called Cold Kiss because I'm going to Golden Fleece. We don't know much about it, but I guess it came from a gold sheet. And Cold Kiss is like in Russia, basically. Isn't that weird? Like, this is Greece. This is Macedonia, this is Troy, basically. So if you like sail through these straits, which there's a word for them, I just don't know them. Propontis, I don't know. Uh, you get to the Black Sea, and, and then it's like Russia and China, which really is like the final frontier. The, the Roman Empire will never really make it to those places. He assembles a crew to go with him on the, and they're called the Argives. I don't know, well, the Argonauts, rather. Because the boat is called the Argo, which might be a reference to the word Argives, which is something Homer uses to refer to the Greek people. And like Heracles joins with his uh, boyfriend. Um, Orpheus joins, who's the greatest musician of all time. Atalanta, who we'll, we haven't talked about, but she's kind of a minor uh, hero. She's really good at running and archery, so she's kind of like a, an acolyte of Diana. Uh, Philoctetes is a famous archer, who I think Phil's like his, it's his namesake. But in Greek mythology, like this is a human. He's not a satyr, but he will fight in the Trojan War later. And the Boreads, who are just these winged dudes who are like Jimmy Dodds. Uh, this might not seem like that impressive, but this is basically a Justice League uh, of, of Greek heroes. Not, like, yeah, like, we haven't talked about Orpheus too much, and these guys are kind of minor. But like, eventually Medea joins up, so they get their own. Uh, what would Medea be? She'd be like Zatanna. Do you know Zatanna? She's like the magician lady who sometimes interacts with Batman. Um, and uh, Adelina's kind of Black Canary. Neither are quite Wonder Woman. But yeah, it's very, very Justice League y. And they have these various episodes that are kind of, they remind us of uh, Odyssey and eventually uh, Aeneid as well. They go to this island of only women because the women all kill men at some point. 
Um, and it's not even the Amazonian. So there's two separate islands in Greek mythology of, of women who just live by themselves. And that idea kind of is echoed in Diana slash Artemis, who always has these, these priestesses follow her around and they just kind of like don't mess with men or society in general. They just kind of go out in the wilderness and like hunt and hang out with animals. So there's this weird like the, the thing that shows up over and over again in Greek myths of, of women not like the dudes. Yeah. Uh, or like wanting to just like remove themselves from that. Like, they have no yeah, they have to cross into some phlegates, which maybe I'm pronouncing correctly, which are these rocks that, that clash, and they just have to like go through them really quickly. And they eventually they got to get past some harpies. They eventually get to Colchis, where Jason meets his new girlfriend, Medea. Because the gods are helping Medea, Aphrodite casts a spell on Medea to make her fall in love with Jason. So it's kind of one of those situations where it's like he's in love with him. Maybe she actually would have liked him just naturally, but also she has like a spell cast on her. And she is the daughter of King Aethi, the guy who actually is in charge of the Golden Fleece. But now she's in love with Jason, so she's like, I'm going to help you get the Golden Fleece. He has to then do three different trials to get the Golden Fleece. The first one is to yoke uh, fire-breathing bulls. Uh, what does that mean to yoke a bull, anyone? Y-O-K-E, Cammy. Yeah. It's like a harness, and this was actually like a real thing. So, I mean, you can really, the, the fingerprint of ancient Greek culture is all over this story. Because this is something that they probably actually did. They actually to yoke bulls. So they're like, what would a hard trial be? Oh, you're yoking bulls except they can breathe fire. Um, and so it's like you're putting the harness over the bulls, and it's attached to a plow. And then the, you know, that's how you could plow before they were tracked. Uh, I feel like sometimes the Romans were like, okay, so what is the weirdest thing we can come up with that's challenging? Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's just like you see how much farming is a big part of their life. Like this, that they even have agrarian themes coming up in their trials. They use normal things. Yeah. yeah. Horse, right. Their myths are just like their normal life combined with like the things that you would think of when you're dreaming. So I was thinking like goat herds having dreams and waking up, be like, oh, I had this crazy idea about a dude named Jason. Like, I want to go tell the town about him. And that's how a myth gets started. We don't actually know. Like, you can't trace myths like that. But anyway, I couldn't find a better picture than this. Like, so like, yo, 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 I had this dream about this guy named Jason. Or like, who was the guy who was like, hey, I had a dream about like, there's like, first there's Cronus or Saturn, and then there's, like, he eats his kids, and, like, who's the guy who, like, invented Greek religion, you know? It's kind of crazy. But look at this goofy deviant art image. Anyway, he does this. The second thing is he has to sow dragon teeth into the plowed earth, and everyone knows that when you plant dragon teeth, they turn into a bunch of humans that grow up out of the ground. It's just a thing that happens in Greek mythology exactly twice, as far as I know. The Greek version of Noah, you know, like, Noah and the Ark? The Greeks have their own flood myth, and at the end of it, Noah or their version of Noah called Pyramus, has to throw dragon teeth over his shoulders and they turn into like the first humans so he can repopulate the world. Anyway, so there's two different occasions where this is a thing. I don't know why it's a thing. But then Jason has to kill these people in this live action version. They're like skeletons. And he just like throws a rock between them and they all kind of like start attacking each other because they're really dumb or something. That's weird. Yeah. And the last thing is he has to use a potion. He, he used a potion with the bulls that his girlfriend gave him loot to be fireproof, and he uses another potion that his girlfriend to the rescue made him to put the final trial to sleep, which is a little dragon, which surely was probably bigger than this, like Luke or Adrian or whoever. Doesn't that look kind of, like that would still be really dangerous, potentially, could probably like rip you apart if you're very muscular. But we don't picture dragons as being the size of like a large stone. Like there's something kind of funny about that. But he, he just puts like, it to sleep. I think that's like a cool thing to think about like back then. Yeah. Also, I associate dragons with medieval, like, Western European culture, like English lore and stuff. But, I mean, no, they show up in ancient Greek mythology 3,000 years ago. So dragons have, have always been a thing. I don't know how people knew about dinosaurs, basically, way before they knew about dinosaurs. But they did. They, like, sensed that they, there had been giant Whoa. lizards walking around. Whoa. I want to get to what Cora just realized, but Lucy first. Yeah, yeah, it's not even a big dog. Right, it's almost like a medium-sized dog. What was Cora's realization? What if we have dragons because back when these people were alive, there were still dinosaurs? Well, okay, so there, there weren't, right? Because I did actually entertain that last question. It's, it's a good question because every once in a while an animal gets cut off and sometimes it's like conserved and it like stays alive on an island and even though the rest of the species is extinct. What I think is more feasible, because honestly, it's like, who knows? 
what is maybe more feasible is that somebody's like little brother stumbled into a cave in ancient Greece and found like the earliest dinosaur skeletons or something. And they're like, oh, this is like the skeleton doesn't make sense. This is not a thing that exists. And from that, that's how they would derive the idea of mythical beasts by finding skeletons that they can't explain. I don't know if that would have happened, like if skeletons would just be like preserved. And, but they, they were like digging and mining back then, 3,000 years ago. It's called the Bronze Age because they were digging and holes getting bronze out of the earth. So, when did, when, when did dinosaurs discovered, y'all? But like, when are dinosaurs first discovered? It's kind of a certain. 1824. So, imagine <laughs> what if you were born in 1810 and when you turn 14 years old, you find out, like, oh, do you know some scientists, archaeologists, people, like, found these, like, crazy skeletons, and it turns out there was giant reptiles walking around? That would be insane. Like, that, the idea of dinosaurs is no more, more than 108 years old. It's not Sadie? What if wings are made of cartilage and like there would be no trace of them at all? You know, I assume. Yeah, I assume there'd be traces of like, like you'd be able to like. These archaeologists are crazy. They they kind of pick out all these details. But I don't know. It's a cool thing to think about. You know, like, and it's interesting because like, there's no way we know exactly what dinosaurs look like because like, if we had to assume what cats look like or like what a hippopotamus looks like, there's like I've seen all these drawings of how like if you were near cows or like how animals. Like, they would look terrifying. Yeah. Yeah, it would probably blow your mind. Like, your eyes probably wouldn't be able to compute it. And the whole thing with, like, oh, they actually all have feathers. And, like, no one really thinks of them having feathers because that was a later thing that people found out. Callie, then Lucy, and we'll continue, but... Yeah, I almost like I almost get kind of grossed out to think about that. Um, yeah, maybe they. Have, I mean, cows have three stomachs technically, right? But uh, it's not really have three stomachs, so, so they can they eat grass. grass. Yeah, good question, okay. Callie. It kind of grosses me out. Like, not gonna lie, Lucy. Well, the cow's stomachs are in the same general area, but yeah. sometimes there's like one here and it's all the way back there. <laughs> kind of weird, uh, Lucy. <laughs> I would like to find a video on that. I'm sure it's some it's some weird explanation, some technique with, to analyze fossils. You can somehow. Also, the centaur has two stomachs. Does that mean they have four intestines? Uh, Sadie. Is there still trace DNA on the fossils? Can y'all become paleontologists? Dinosaurs are so crazy. Well, y'all, like, these paleontologists. You have to like look really hard to find DNA evidence of certain well, things because like it's so old. And, like that's why I'm so like a lot of murder cases nowadays are so old because like if if they found the body really late, if it had already like fully died, it's really hard to figure out like, what happened. Yeah, y'all, this is really random, but how many stars are in the solar system? In the solar system. Oh, the solar system. One. It is just one. Okay. It's just one. Did y'all know that? Like, y'all knew that. Okay. But I'm going to I'm gonna make myself sound really, really dumb, guys, but then I'll keep moving. Well, from Earth, technically, it would be eight because the sun and the moon are all and then all the planets look like stars too, but they're like, they're not stars. Right, they're not. It's like our solar system has eight planets, two dwarf planets, and one star. Guys, I had a realization, I think it was the end of quarantine. I was just reading a comic book, and it turns out I'm a lot more dumb than I realized. Because, like, it said something about, it was like, oh, one star in the solar, and I was like, what does that mean? Like, you mean, like, the sun, I guess, but, like, aren't there other... Because some of it is semantics, where I just, like, was equating solar system with a galaxy, like the Milky Way galaxy. It's not the same, right? Solar system is just part of it's our system within the Milky Way galaxy. But I really pictured that between our sun, which I know we all orbit around, I'm not that stupid, and Pluto, which is, like, kind of the edge of our system, I thought that there were, like, stars. I thought there were stars. Like, but, so, okay, so y'all didn't think that. All right. Good, good, good. You, I know. Well, I was really shook, and I like stayed up all night. I was like, I was chatting with friends. I was like, Hey, did you know this? 
Like, I think I'm having like a breakdown because <laughs> I'm kind of confused. And it doesn't make sense. Like, I really thought the giant uh, gas planets, the gas giants and the terrestrial planets were like weaving their way through the stars without ever hitting the stars. But I just like, I don't know how I missed that. Like, I missed a day of second grade. So it's really scary, guys. Don't end up like me in your late 20s. Like yeah, learning something, yeah. Like learning something hard. really basic. That would be kind of like if you learn that years counted backwards. That's how scary it would be. Like I, I'm glad now that I'm on the other side of it, but it was. It's scary to find out you're that dumb. Um, I'm not dumb at Latin, but like it's good. I'm. I'm not going to teach astronomy next year. Sardia is because I'm like, I just I'm shook. I'm kind of shook. I've tested on some people. A lot of people, you can ask them how many stars are in the solar system, and they will say, I don't know, thousands, thousands. And, but they're probably just equating solar system with Milky Way galaxy. I don't think they're actually thinking of stars between – anyway, I, it, no one else. No one else, no brave soul wants to be, hey, you know what, Mr. Calamello? I, I feel kind like of I'm not alone because I don't really think about space a lot. I like – Yeah. Like, for some reason, it's like scary to me, like to think about the fact that they like, live in such a big – it is creepy. It's weird that it like freaks me out. And so like, does every star. Every star has a system. Like I don't know. Sarah, what's it? Okay, there's this girl and there's this dating that they were doing. Or, like you call them, you're like, why aren't you going out on a date with my family? And this guy said that this girl was like really dumb, and that she. They were like, what do you mean? And he said she thought that this was the twentieth century. Like, she thought it was the 20th century. So Even though she's like, surely yeah, she's heard 21st. Mm -hmm. Like, she sees the 21st century Fox logo, right? Um, it, it, know, but she was not like, really just Google it. She was like, no, I know I'm right. Okay, that's even worse than my thing. That's actually really bad. Um, but yeah, that could happen. You're like, the 1900s, that's the 19th century. But that's something only like a baby's allowed to think for very long. Yeah, she was like 30. Yeah, like, Lucy? <laughs> That'd be cool if deer were smart enough to like like understand cave drawing level like pictographs. That'd be cool. Somewhere. And so that they like line up like they're part of our society. They're like, you gotta wait our turn. We gotta wait. Pedestrian walking. We gotta wait. Yeah. What else? I don't know. There, there's some things when I was a kid where I like made up a, a reason for something. It's just because I was a kid and I like I just like invented an explanation. But I don't know. I just never. Anyway, what Sarah? And then we're gonna get back to this. Can y'all believe Bailey will never know how, how I was that stupid for the long? Like, I unveiled something really crazy. And just, what, Sarah? One time my mom got fired and I was like five, but I thought fired meant, meant like, like witch trials where they like tied her up. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. Set her on fire. Yeah. So I was like falling down. I was so sad. I'm like, oh, it's so sorry. I'm like, I was just giving away all my stuff. I'm like, oh no, we. She's like, what are you talking about? Like, uh, that was the day that she didn't realize that I was like, dumb. I was so dumb. <laughs> don't, I was like, I was don't set my mom on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was like about to call her for work. I think everybody has those things, and we don't have enough time to recount them all. But like, I used to call this bridge in my city Grandma's Bridge when I was a baby. But then I, in my head, I was like, oh, it's because my grandma actually owns that bridge. And I even had, like, a memory of, like, seeing, watching the news and, like, seeing my grandma, like, tell them how to build a bridge. And at one, at one point, they were like, no, like, dude, like, it's, we just, like, called it that when you were a baby because we take that bridge to get to grandma's house. Like, it's not. And I was like, okay. Oh, got it, got it. When I was younger, like, my brain could process the word itchy. Like, literally could not process the word. So whenever I'd, like, wear an itchy sweater, I'm like, ew, this sweater is grouchy. Or, like, grouchy. <laughs> Uh, the first week of second grade, I forgot how to spell the word of, because I thought there was a B. I thought there was a B in it. I had like a belt. I was like, how do you call of? Like, um, Sammy? Nice. Nice. Guys, tough. Wait, I'm sorry, I kind of missed it. Oh, wow. That, that'd be a lot. Priscilla can't spell hand. She spelled the H A I N D. Weird. Callie? Okay. 
Wow. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that kind of makes sense. I used to, I used to think that if you played a board game for too long, you go to oh, Jumanji. Oh, that's not even show you that. Like, these are kind of fun because it shows you, like, I mean, we, we sometimes could think of early man. I know that's not desperate for me to connect it back to, but early, like, mythology, that's early man trying to explain things. And so, like, babies kind of do the same thing. They try to, like, explain things, and they just, like, invent stuff. Lucy? I would never have this, like, story. Yeah. Like, so, like, up until I was, like, nine years old, I would eject my seat. Oh. Like, you would eject your seat? That's what my parents did. I'm like, this is the Oh, yeah, yeah. That'd be cool. I wish cars were that crazy. Like, I feel like I saw something like that too. Like, some of the buttons were hard. Like, what is that? Doing? Okay, the question for you is, Jared, what is the little button inside a car right next to the AC? It's like it has a picture of a car and then it has like a back air circulation. It's something about circulation. I thought it was like. Maybe your windows are foggy or something. No, people. People make a joke out of it. They're like, oh, yeah, that's the undo axis car accident, but. Undo the car Uh, Cora? So, when I was little, I'm not sure if this was anyone else, but I thought cattails were where corn dogs came from. <laughs> oh, that, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just cute. That kind of makes sense. Like, you bake them and they kind of like. I used to think if you ate watermelon seeds, the watermelon would grow inside you. Yes, I Seeds were stressful when your kids swallowing them. Yeah. That was stressful. Yeah, when oh, I, yeah, I whenever um, my parents said if I swallowed gum, it would stay in my digestive system for seven years, or I was so yes. scared to swallow. That's what they would say, yeah. Uh, I had something, this is random, but, you know, I'm from Louisiana, and one of my sisters is named Anna, and so I thought she was, like, she was, like, the mascot of the whole state. I was, like, because her name's inside of the state, so I was, like, there's something about like, one of my sisters where she's, like, the main Louisianian. Or something. She's just any... me, Louisiana. Yeah. Just... Louisiana is all about her. Luke? <laughs> yeah, you can, dog. You can. So you, like, thought Louisiana was, like, named after her. Like, when she was born, it's like, no, it's Louisiana. And I, yeah, I don't know what I thought it meant. I just thought it was. Yeah. All right. I didn't know my brother was named Logan after Wolverine until I was, like, literally 10. That's, that's a cool name, so you can sweet. All right, guys. Those digressions were honestly fun and fitting for Monday. Let me really quickly say the violent things so that we can be done with Jason and tomorrow we'll get into participles. But, okay, so he returns with the Golden Fleece and the king is cool with that, really. Um, but he's not cool with Medea going back with Jason, but Medea goes back with Jason to Greece because she's in love with him. And one weird and really weird detail is that Medea's dad is pursuing them in a boat. And Medea has this idea that if she kills her brother, who's apparently with him, and chops him up, yeah. he'll put his body parts in the water behind their boat, and that'll somehow slow down her father's pursuit. Because he's, like, collecting, he's like, oh my gosh, my son, like, and it's just like a really, it's like such a random toss-up detail, but it kind of makes sense, because we learn Medea really is crazy. They get back to Eoculus, and uh, Jason gives King Peleus the Golden Fleece, so I guess he would have gone on to, like, replace him, but Medea, um, she tricks Peleus' daughters into killing Peleus. Because she gets back and like heals Jason's dad is really old. Can y'all stop talking, please? And then uh, King Palis' daughters are like, hey, Medea, like, it's cool, you're a witch. Our dad's really old, too. Can you, like, teach us a trick to, like, make him better? And she's like, oh, yeah, if you just, like, stab him a bunch of times, so he'll actually get better. Oh I'm not making it up. That's actually what happens. And so they just stab their dad to death, thinking it's going to, like, cure him and die. Um, she's like, oh, yeah, just, like, stab, like, just right yeah. in his heart. Just, like, stab him. Again, yeah, and these, these the people in Colchis, that's a foreign culture, so that's part of why they're like, oh yeah, like they probably know magic over there in Russia, it's not called Russia at this point, but they're like, oh that's so far away, surely they know magic. So it's like someone, like Matia, she has this, like, aura, people know she's like a witch, she knows things, so she can get away with telling gold people to stab someone a hundred times, and they'll actually get better when she's just messing with you, yeah? Yeah, they get banished to Corinth. There, Jason, he kind of goes astray, and he gets involved with this princess named Creusa. So the last little messed up thing is that Medea, to get back at them, she not only has Creusa's dad killed, but then, like, trigger warning and fantasize, she, she's had two kids with Jason at this point, Ooh. and she killed both of them. Oh, um, just wow. to get back at him, it's kind of explained as, like, she thinks that if he ends up with Creusa, that her kids with Jason will just be, like, slaves or, like, prisoners or something. But that doesn't justify this at all, right? So this is, like, one of the major Greek tragedies. We know these Greeks, they just love the most messed up stories possible, whether it's Clytemnestra. 
killing Agamemnon, her husband, when he gets back from war, getting killed by her children, Electra and Orestes, uh, accidentally marrying your mom, and then like uh, gouging your eyeballs out because you, you realize that that's Oedipus Rex, or if it's killing your kids like Medea. Huh? I don't understand how this is like with a radio. I know, right? They're just like they wake up from a dream. They're like, oh yeah, this lady tells these kids to kill their father, and then like it's totally real. Well, it's just, yeah, right. Well, it's just that it was like taboo. It was like the most taboo stuff. That's what they like to see. Like nowadays, we like to go to theaters to see like CGI and like fantastical things. But ancient Greeks, they like to see like the most messed up things. Like that's how <laughs> that, that was like they would get their emotional response to that's that. Kind of like how we've evolved. Like we went, we flip flopped around with like, cinema and things. Like nowadays, people are like, yeah, I don't want to see anything messed up. Like we cry over Marley and Marley and me. And then like the ancient Greeks are like, oh my god, let me hear about that story about the lady who killed the, the, her kids and then everyone else. Yeah, it's all, often family on family violence. Like that usually is a cornerstone of of the, like the really messed up Greek tragedies. Yeah. That is like inter familial violence. You know, Fair? Like, Greek, I don't know. So, like, whenever I watch a dog movie, if it's like just the dog runs away, I cry so hard. So, in, in, um, like any other movie, when a human dies, I like I have the urge to be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I so messed up, but then I saw a TikTok where everyone else wants to do Maybe that's a good attitude, honestly. But yeah, dog movies are like the saddest. I can't deal with sad dogs. Stories. 